Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to uh, the PACAC Keystone Virtual College Exploration Fair. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I'm pleased to be able to facilitate this session with Jacob Usterman from University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities. Uh, before he begins, I'm going to share my screen and give you a couple of pointers for, as attendees. Hold on just a minute, please. Make sure I get the right one up. All right. So again, welcome very, very much to all of you. Um, if you do have questions, uh, please use the Q and A feature, um, and they can be. They will either be answered um, with a comment back to you, or just as part of the session. Uh, as an attendee, your camera and your microphone are off, um, but please do know that uh, Jacob will be listening uh, intently and checking through the Q and A. Um, also, I remind you that there are lots of great sessions coming up and also some terrific ones that have been previously recorded. And you can sign up for more sessions through www.pacac.org backslash virtual. Or if you wanna check out the recordings, they are also accessible at that very same site. So I will stop sharing and I turn things over to you, Jacob. Thank you so much in advance for sharing your time with us today. Of course. So thank you so much for everybody for joining me today. Um, yeah, with the Q&A, so it is just me today. So I will confess, I'm going to do about a 30 to 35 minute long presentation talking about the university and what we have to offer as well as getting some aspects of our application. As we put them questions in the Q&A, frankly, I'll probably save them for the end and I'll just kind of answer them live at the end. So as I'm going through, please feel free to throw questions in the Q&A. Now, this presentation today, so first starting off, we are coming from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. In Minnesota, the University of Minnesota actually has five system campuses, but we are the main flagship campus. We're the main one, largest one, right in the heart of Minneapolis and St. Paul. This presentation today, I made it exceptionally picture heavy. The reason I did that is because I have the assumption that you have not been able to visit campus yet, right? Because of COVID, right? And that makes it really hard to travel. And so I wanted to try to bring it to you as much as possible and I'll describe them as best I can as we go through this presentation. So starting off, what you're looking at actually is a picture from the second floor of our student union. It's called Kaufman Memorial Union. You're looking out on a quad that has all these educational buildings surrounding it. Like for example, on the left side here, was orange brick building is our chemistry building. Little green dome popping over the top of the trees is our physics building. And then you have like Northrop Memorial Hall, which is at the end of it, which is gonna house our honors advising, as well as it's gonna have a, a ballroom that will host TED Talks, national speakers, ballet, orchestra, you name it. Another thing I want you all to know is this train. This is called the Metro Transit Train. This is the city train for Minneapolis and St. Paul. This goes right in front of our student union, like you see. You hop that train, four stops. 20 minutes, you're in downtown Minneapolis, the skyline you see on the left side. I'll talk about the benefits of that a little bit more in a minute. So to start us off, I'm gonna play a video for everybody that was prepared by our athletics department to actually help try to recruit students or athletes from out of state. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna showcase a lot of the benefits and the exciting and fun things you can do in the city of Minneapolis, as well as some good overview shots of campus. So I turned down my volume a little bit here and hopefully I properly shared my sound because the hype music is intense. had a lot going on in it and I apologize for those little volume boxes sitting in the corner for some of the video but what you saw on this right was like for example Lake Bidet Mikasco which is actually Minneapolis is nicknamed the city of lakes there are three chained together right in the heart of the city but yeah in the summer you could totally go stay in the paddleboarding canoeing sailing you name it 
or you saw some pictures of like our professional sports teams. You saw Mall of America, the largest mall in the nation with its own amusement park right on the inside of the mall. But then you also saw some of our nature nearby with Minnehaha Falls. What I also appreciate about this video is this shot right here. And the reason I appreciate this is because it helps explain our campus a little bit further in how the University of Minnesota Twin Cities technically has three parks or three campuses. So our main campus or our main part is the Minneapolis East Bank campus. This is going to house most of our programs as well as like that, that hall, uh, the hall you saw in that first photo, as well as our sports arenas. Why it's called East Bank is because it is built on the east bank of the mighty Mississippi River you see right here. Then you take this walking bridge or bike over or bus or train, you get to the West Bank campus. West Bank is going to house our college, our, actually our business school, which is Carlson School of Management, as well as our College of um, Arts programs. But so our Carlson School of Management, our business school is going to be right over here. And then our arts programs like acting, dance, fine arts, music will also be in West Bank. Then we also have our St. Paul campus, which is about a 10, 15 minute bus ride away. So that campus houses predominantly our College of Food, Agricultural, and Natural Resource Sciences, or CFANS for short. CFANS, um, the reason they have that campus is that they literally have their own agricultural and cattle space for students to work with. Technically, it's the largest campus because of the amount of land that they utilize. Now, at the University of Minnesota, we have this mantra of come curious. We are a school, we, we want you to come hungry of what real world questions are you hoping to solve? Why are you curious to get further educated in the first place? Because we're a school that amounts amount of academics, internships, study abroad, research capacities. And while we can throw all these resources at you, we're not going to force them on you either. We kind of want you to come with that hunger to seize the challenge and utilize these resources because they will all help you be fully prepared to tackle the real world questions that you're hoping to solve. So thinking of academics, we have 150 majors and over 135 minors. By the way, you're looking at an introductory chemistry lab. How we organize our majors and minors is spread, and spread into eight freshman admitting colleges. So when you apply to the university, you're not just applying to the university overall, you're actually choosing your top two colleges of interest. So for example, let's say you're interested in mechanical engineering. Your first choice college would be the College of Science and Engineering. Your second major couldn't be chemical engineering because it is in the same college. So hopefully that makes sense. Maybe this example you would do mechanical engineering is your first choice college, science and engineering, computer science, which also is in our College of Liberal Arts, as a second choice college. Now you are not married to this major, you do not have to stay in this major, but just for the sake of the application, that's how it works. So I want to talk about each of these today, just to give ourselves a little bit of fun facts about them and familiarize ourselves with our programs, so that if you're curious about looking into Minnesota, you know where to start. So with School of Nursing, this is our newest college, it's been on our campus for about a year and a half. But we have had the longest campus-based nursing program in the country. Our Bachelor of Science in Nursing has been on our campus since 1909. For a very long time, you had to be in the College of Liberal Arts for a year and then transfer in. But now it's a direct admit program. You're going straight in, taking those nursing classes right away. Pretty good outcomes. About 97% of our students that graduate from this program pass the NCLEX exam, which is a national licensing exam to become a registered nurse, their first time. Pretty good again. outcomes. Carlson School of Management, this picture, by the way, is the Carlson School of Management. This is our business schools. So this is finance, accounting, international business, entrepreneurial management. Something unique about our Carlson experience is that by the time you graduate, in recognition of our globalizing economy, you are going to have to study abroad. Whether it be three weeks, summer, a semester, a whole year, you're gonna see another part of the world to get you prepared for the diversifying marketplace. College of Science and Engineering, as a college overall, it is ranked number four in the nation ahead of, ahead of MIT. All of its programs are within the top 25. It contains 12 engineering degrees, 12 different types of engineering degrees. The top three most popular are biomedical, chemical, and electrical engineering. It also houses our hard sciences. So we're thinking of astrophysics, chemistry, computer science, bachelor science, as well as data science. It's a new major here. College of Liberal Arts, this is our largest college. So it has about 70 majors our 30 different languages and cultural studies, our top 10 ranked psychology program, sociology program. But then it also includes economics, journalism, dance, uh, computer science as well. This is a college that if you find yourself feeling undecided, I encourage you to start here because this is a college that allows you to mix and mingle a lot of different interests together and maybe even create your own independent study so you know exactly what it is you wanna study and you learn exactly what you want to by the time you graduate. College of Food, Agricultural and Natural Resource Sciences. 
or CFANS for short, they're trying to save the world, preserving our earth through environmental science and fisheries and wildlife preservation, feeding our earth through agriculture and agricultural business, as well as the animals. Our animal science program is the most popular here, top 10 ranked in the world, in the nation, nation, world, world, excuse me, um, with our pre-veterinary tracks. College of Education, Human Development, so early ed, special ed, secondary education, and then also human development, so human resources, family social sciences. If you're interested in occupational therapy or physical therapy, kinesiology is a huge program here, as well as sports management is a very popular program here as well. College of Design, our most popular program is our architecture, apparel design, product design, retail merchandising. We're top five in the nation for retail merchandising. With this college, you, this is one of only two of our eight where you have to apply directly into the major. So the reason we have you apply directly into the major for this college is that we're gonna get you in the drawing studio immediately, like as soon as you get here. We're gonna get you into drawing, building a portfolio, and get into critiquing so that by the time you graduate, you'll have a robust portfolio to show to future employers. The only other college we are applying directly into the major is the School of Nursing, because the only major is nursing. Every other college, you're essentially starting as undecided. You can declare your major as soon as you get here. We're kind of coming more with the assumption that you're applying more just to the college overall and not to a particular major. The College of Biological Sciences, what makes us unique is we are one of few universities in the nation where we have an entire college dedicated to the study of life. All of the majors are founded in biology. So bio, biochem, genetics, neuroscience. Something else I've seen here is students that are interested in pre-med, this is a very popular program for them. I want you all to know though, you do not have to be in this college to be a pre-med student. On our campus, you can actually be any major. You can be an art history major and be a pre-med student. For us, pre-med is more of a minor where you have to make sure you take certain prerequisite classes and you allow, that allows you to be able to apply to medical school. And we have the Pre-Health Student Resource Center, which is a center of walk-in advising for people who are from the professional field of medicines, different, across different fields of medicine, who have ways to have you explore your fields, explore your interests, maybe even get in connections with actual working professionals, as well as advise you to make sure you get these classes done, regardless of major you have on campus. So again, you do not have to be in this college to be a pre-med student, but it's very popular here because those prerequisite classes are pretty well baked into the majors already. So it's very common for these students to be pre-med. Now we are a Big Ten school, right? 31,000 undergraduate students. However, our student to faculty ratio, regardless of major, across the entire university is 17 to one. Not too bad. 80% of our classes are fewer than 50 students. 64% are fewer than 30 students. The classes that are bigger than 50 are typically your intro ones, right? Intro chem, intro psych, calc one for engineering students. If you get a class that is bigger than 50, you are guaranteed a discussion section or a lab section, caps off at about 30 students, partnered with a graduate student or a professor that will help you get your questions answered alongside your lecture-based class. So that when you have questions in class, you're not completely lost in a sea of people, you can definitely dive into that further in your discussion or lab section. Research, we are a top 10 public research university in the country. We're also Minnesota's land-grant research facility. So yes, we have a relationship with the state, but also that means that roughly 90% of all the research done in the entire state of Minnesota goes through our system in some capacity. So there is an immense amount available for our students to get involved in, even as freshmen. For you to get involved, you can get involved through the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, or UROP for short. Through UROP, you either get connected with a professor who's researching something you want to, or you can actually propose your own independent project get some funding from the university, and be partnered one-on-one -on -one with a professor for mentorship to make sure your project goes along smoothly. Study abroad, we have one of the most robust in the country, over 200 programs, over 60 countries. So while yes, our business students are required to study abroad, we take pride that everybody else can too. So again, if you wanna do three weeks, a summer, a semester, a whole year, we highly encourage that if you have the willingness that you wanna see another part of our incredible world to diversify your experience, that you can, and we highly encourage. We have over 900 student groups, more than 200 multicultural student groups, more than 50 intramural sports teams, um, maybe Spring Jam or student-led concert series, more than, with this, if you come to campus and find yourself feeling bored, come on, let's tap back into that come curious mentality because I promise you, someone else on campus has similar interests to you. You just have to get out and meet them. Also, it is 2020. We have far too many easy ways for you to get connected with student groups digitally. So it is very easy for you to get connected with peers. 
Raras Gaima. This has been part of our student rouser since like 1890. So we do have 20 NCAA Big Ten teams. Um, 12 women, eight men. Shout out to them. We are the Maroon and Gold State, right? Maroon and Gold dominates this state. We have over a million Gopher fans that come to cheer on our sports teams every year. So we definitely have a lot of serious pride for our sports teams. As a current student, all of the sports are free except for three. Men's football, men's basketball, men's hockey. Those are going to come at discounted rates, whether it be season passes or single tickets. But I'll let you all right now. The school spirit definitely comes out in ferocity when our border battles come to town. So like, for example, if Iowa is in town, everybody's got to see us beat Iowa. If Wisconsin is in town, got to beat the Badgers. It's an annual event. Everybody, the whole state knows we got to beat the Badgers. We could lose every game as long as we beat the Badgers. It is some serious rivalry between us and Wisconsin. Now, students have asked me, what separates Minnesota from other schools? I would say as a school of our size, our capacity, the amount that we have to offer, and you compare us to other schools of similar amount, the fact that we have a major metropolitan city literally in our backyard. Like I said in the beginning, right? You hop that train, four stops, 20 minutes, and you're in downtown Minneapolis, the skyline you see on the top left side here. Our other big schools, we're not saying you can't get to a major city, it's just a little harder, maybe a 45 minute drive, maybe an hour drive. For us, you don't even need a car. You can just hop this train and it's 20 minutes. On the professional side, we have 16 Fortune 500 companies based in the Twin Cities alone, which is second in Fortune 500s per capita in the nation behind only New York City. Pretty good company. We have the largest career fair in the state, over 250 employers twice a year, once in the fall, once in the spring, looking to bring in our students. So there's an immense amount of internships, practicums, co-ops, clinical hours, whatever real life experience you can think of. Heck, as a psychology student myself, I had three internships through my four-year career at the University of Minnesota. But then, what about the social side? College is more than just sitting in a classroom. What are you gonna do for fun? What are you gonna do on a Wednesday night when you got some free time or Saturday when you got a couple hours to spare? Well, maybe you want to see a Broadway show. We got our illustrious Guthrie Theater, or maybe the Orpheum, which hosts, hosts the uh, national shows like Hamilton or Wicked. Maybe you want to see a concert, the legendary First Ave, or maybe a more intimate feel at the Armory. Or maybe you're a sports fan, like me. Aside from college sports, we have six professional sports teams, literally right off this train. So yeah, catching a, a Wednesday night NBA game or a Major League Baseball game, or heck, the third stop is the Minnesota Vikings. And then we also have our own cultural scene of over 70 different languages and dialects in the Twin Cities. Heck, we have our own restaurant scene as well. So I've been living in Twin Cities for years and I still find a new restaurant every weekend. Now I've talked about the benefits of Minnesota. I also wanna make sure you all are aware of the cost. I was not gonna slide that past anybody. Non-resident tuition for us is just north of $31,000. Room and board, this is the same for everyone. So Minnesota, reciprocity, international students, everyone's got to pay this. This is estimated because you could have a food meals a week less. As an incoming student, I want you all to know, you are not required as a freshman to live in the dorms. However, if you want a meal plan, you do have to live in the dorms. So you either have both or you have neither. Your call. Um, but if you want to do apartment life and commute, if you want to live with family that might live in the area and commute, absolutely, you can do so. Miscellaneous fees, estimated for books and how often you travel back and forth between home and campus. So these two lines down here. So if you are in our College of Science and Engineering or our Carlson School of Management, our business school, they charge a $2,000 a year surcharge to maintain their state-of-the-art facilities and labs. So they're the 50,000 number. Everyone else is the 48,000 number. This is before any scholarships, any loans, any need-based aid, work study, all of that. When you apply to the University of Minnesota, you are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships across the entire university. Nothing more you need to do. Blessing, you don't need to do anything else. Curse, no one else does either. So it can be a competitive scholarship situation. One scholarship that I want all of my out-of-state students to know, this is one amongst others, but it is a national scholarship. So it goes at four levels, 2,500, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 dollars a year for the four years that you're here. For to ballpark competitiveness, typically the $10,000 a year scholarship goes to students who are like in the top 10% of their high school class, amongst other competitive factors. So I'm not saying you have to be 
a uh, top 10% student to get the scholarship, but just to ballpark, ballpark competitiveness. And I also want to showcase, if I didn't say it already, the scholarship is just for out-of-state students. So not Minnesota, not reciprocity, not even international, just out-of-state domestic students. Now our credits. So we have a flat rate policy of 13 credits, meaning that if everything past 13 is the same cost as 13. So 15 credits, same as 13. 20 credits, same as 13. So if you feel a little bit aggressive and want to take a few extra classes every semester, you absolutely can do so. That is a complete free benefit to you. Most of our students take about 16 to 18 credits a semester, about four to six classes, and graduate in four years. Um, to showcase the benefit of that, for students who do the 16 to 18 credits, by the time they graduate, they've earned an entire semester's worth of free credit, just to put that in more perspective. Now admissions. So let's get to the nitty gritty of what it takes to join us here on our campus. So for us, we ask you to complete one application, whether it be the Golden Gopher application or in-house application or the Common App. We are totally cool with either. And frankly, about 65% of our admitted students last year did the Common App. So frankly, we're, please do the Common App. That's awesome. With the Common App, once you complete it, you're a, or Golden Gopher, once you complete your application, you're automatically considered for admission, honors, and merit-based scholarships like I just talked about. What a complete application includes, filling out the application form like you're supposed to, as well as self-reported academic record, meaning we are expecting you to find your unofficial transcript and put in your grades and coursework from ninth grade onwards. We also expect you to put in like your 12th grade classes. We don't expect you to have 12th grade like grades yet, but we do just wanna see the classes you're taking. So for the sake of our application, do not send us your initial transcripts. We will not take them. It has to be self-reported. Then an application fee of $55. Now for the fall 2021 application, we are no test required, meaning we do not require an ACT or an SAT for the fall 2021 application. At this time, I can't speak to beyond 2021. I unfortunately don't have those answers at this time. Now, I'll explain a little bit about how that plays into the review. But for the sake of the application, I just want to talk about how that works when you get there. So in the application, there's going to be a question that says yes to consider test scores or no to consider test scores. Once you make that choice and then submit your application, you are locked in on that choice. You cannot change your mind later on. So if you choose no to consider test scores and then submit your application, you can't send us your test scores later. We're not going to take them. Likewise, we won't consider your application complete. If you chose yes, we need a test score for you to consider it complete. With this, if you choose to submit your test score, it is self-reported. So um, you do not need to send us anything official for the sake of the application. So we don't need an initial transcript. We don't even need official test scores. Our entire application is all self-reported. The only time we need anything official is that if, you decide, if you're admitted and decide you want to enroll with us, over the summer, we will ask for a final official transcript from your high school, as well as official scores. That's only in the summer, and that's only if you decide you want to come here. Everything on this application is self-reported. Now, how do we do review? We do holistic review, which means we look at everything about you that you provide us. There are two overarching themes. We have our academic factors and context factors. Academic factors are going to include your coursework through high school, your grades and your classes. For example, we might be looking at specific classes, like if you're interested in our engineering program, we wanna see how you did in math classes. Uh, we'll be looking at your GPA, weighted or unweighted. We will take either, it is totally fine. Class rank, if your school does class rank. If your school does not do class rank, that's totally cool. Just give us your GPA, we'll work with your GPA, as well as your test scores. So all of these factors are working together, right? If you're someone who has really pretty much straight A's and really strong grades, Maybe go without a test score, that's okay. Maybe your grades aren't quite as good as you want them to be, but you have a really good test score, then provide your test score. It allows you a little bit more flexibility to create the best application for yourself that you can. Context factors. These are things happening outside of the classroom. So leadership involvement, community involvement, exceeding winning circumstances you want us to know. The only way we learn about these is through letters of rec and essays. We don't require those, but Students have asked me, even though you don't require it, should I submit one? I say this, every single application we receive is read by, at minimum, two, hum two human beings. It is very likely that when you submit your application, these people haven't met you before. They don't know who you are yet, right? 
how do you want to introduce yourself? Do you want to lean in your academic capability and your grades? Absolutely, you can. Or do you want to provide more context to yourself and who you are outside of the classroom? That is something you can do as well. It's up for you to decide. Now our deadlines. So we have early action, early action two, and regular decision. So across these three deadlines, it is equal consideration for admission, honors, and scholarships. At the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, we do not have a preference for early action students for any of those factors. The only benefit if you apply earlier is that you might get an admission decision sooner, meaning that we do kind of a rolling admissions as basis. So the sooner you apply, the sooner you will likely get an admission decision. If you apply early action, you will get admit, defer, or deny. Admit and deny are pretty straightforward. Defer just means that we need to take more time with your application and we're going to add you to the regular decision pool to review you some more. At regular decision, it goes admit, wait list, or deny. But that's it. So students have asked me, let's say we're getting close to November 1st here and they have an October 24th SAT or ACT exam. My advice to students is that wait until you have your test score to choose to apply. Wait until you have all of your aspects in front of you so that you can, you can confidently decide whether or not you want to provide your test score or not, or if you want, or if you feel confident with your application. Because doing it later is not a detriment to you for the sake of admission. As long as you do it before January 1st, that is my ultimate goal. Just make sure you do it before January 1st. Now our nursing program, our school of nursing is special. They require that you apply by November 1st. This is our only program on campus that requires November 1st. Also, our nursing program will ask you to complete three supplemental essay questions. They're about 150 words each. This is also only for our School of Nursing, no one else. Now, so the minimum high school coursework, before I get to this grade, we're gonna talk about the high school coursework first. So the minimum high school coursework, this is based on what it takes to graduate in the state of Minnesota. You are not in Minnesota. That is a-okay, don't worry. If you are otherwise admissible and you miss one of these, this is not gonna be the reason we deny you. These are not strict requirements by any means. So if you miss one, it is okay. You can still, you can still apply and still admit it. However, our most competitive applicants do meet and exceed all of these expectations. So if you can, I would encourage you to do so. The one note with the three years of science, if you're interested in our College of Biological Sciences or our College of Science and Engineering, they are expecting you to have chemistry, biology, and physics. Please have those three. Now this grid. So this is 2019 data. I will say 2020 data is the same. I just at this time don't have this beautiful grid quite created yet for my 2020 class. So I'm using the 2019 one just for the sake of it's easier to look at, but still the same numbers. So earlier I told you that you're, you are choosing your top two colleges of interest when you apply. Well, with that, some of our colleges are more competitive than others. As you may notice, for example, the College of Science and Engineering, their middle 50% ACT is a 30 to 34, SAT 1380 to 1500, typically top 10% of your high school class. If your school does not do high school rank, that is A-OK. -okay. Um, we'll still take just weighted or unweighted GPA. We'll work with either. Typically, a top 10% student is someone who gets straight A's. When you look at like College of Liberal Arts, for example, who's looking for like top 25% students, those are typically all as and B's, couple C's. Now, as I say these numbers to you, this is the middle 50%. This is not a cutoff at all whatsoever. We'll admit students that are a little bit below these numbers. That's totally fine. So if you're below these, it'll be okay. It just means it's a little harder to get in. That's all that means. Also, back to that question of whether or not you should provide a test score. In this case, so as you look at your college of interest, we'll stay with engineering for right now. If your test score is within this middle 50% or a little bit below, so like in engineering's case, it's a 29 or uh, ACT or SAT of like a 1350, 1330, I say provide your test score. If your test score is not close and it's a little bit further out, do not provide your test score. Don't do it. It's not going to help you. That would be my advice. And now, this final slide here. So as you may notice, that's not me. Um, so unfortunately today, Alyssa Child would have been here today to meet with you, all of you in Pennsylvania, um, but unfortunately she was not feeling well today. So I am here to support her 
So same information, but I wanted to make sure that you got their information as well. So what you're seeing here is their phone number, their direct phone number is the 646 number, as well as Alyssa's email is on the bottom. Um, any questions that you may possibly have, you can definitely reach out to her. Um, I also can uh, share my email. My email is osterj, so O-S-T-E-R-J at U-M-N E-D-U. So you can reach out to me as well. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna look into the Q&A right here. Don't see any questions right now, and that is a-okay. I'm gonna give it another, just a couple moments. Otherwise, I think we're gonna go ahead and end this early and have a fantastic evening, everybody. All right, thank you very, very much, Jacob. That was terrific. Um, those are beautiful shots of campus, and the music really was not too loud. I thought it was just <laughs> um, I am gonna share my slides once again uh, with just a few closing remarks. So hang on just one second. If Absolutely. you would stop sharing, then I can go ahead and do that. Absolutely. All right, here we go. So thank you everybody for joining us. Um, there will be, when we close this program, there will be a quick survey for attendees to fill out and we appreciate it. It's just four questions. It will go very quickly. And as I mentioned at the start of the session, I do encourage you to sign up for more sessions. Um, and if you wanna look back and see some of the recordings of sessions that have already taken place, you are most welcome to do that. So Jacob, once again, thank you very, very much for your introduction to University of Minnesota. Um, we take a quick look. It looks like our attendees do not have any questions. I'm sure they'll follow up with you or Alyssa if they do. Um, so to everybody, I echo what Jacob said. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Be healthy. Be safe, everybody. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.